All right, YouTube, what is up? So it's new side-by-side -side day. We get to see what Polaris is coming out with. I thought it'd be fun to kind of watch the, uh, watch the video with you guys. Um, and then we could kind of talk about it and, uh, and <laughs> do my thoughts on this thing. But let's check it out. Let's check out Polaris' new ride. Pretty crazy looking, pretty crazy looking. Boom, all right. Okay, well, that's what we got. Uh, that's our January 31st release from Polaris. Um, first, I just wanna kinda of talk about, it's been two years, two years for Polaris to come out with a machine to compete with the X3. Um, and I, I thought last year when they came out with the Dynamics uh, suspension on the four-seater, I thought that was going to be the year they're going to, they're going to bring me that, uh, or the two-seater, they're going to bring me that uh, two-seat machine with 200 horsepower and a 72-inch, you know, long travel, and it's going to be Dynamics and, oh man, all these things I'm super excited. I'm like, they're going to bring it to Can-Am and they give us they give us this thing so i'm i'm confused why they won't answer can am i'm confused why they don't feel like they I, I don't know why they haven't bring out the long travel cool crazy buggy to answer the x3 i don't know if they can't i don't i kind of have a theory like i feel like maybe they have to sell more of this older chassis um like they have something that works but it's like a business decision and they can't they can't release that yet. Um, so yeah, I'm a little frustrated that that we're not seeing a good answer to the Can-Am, but I guess good for Can-Am guys, good for X3s, but, uh, but yeah, that surprised me. Okay, let's talk about this guy. So yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed about that, but let's talk about the RS1. Let's kind of go through the video here. I think it's pretty cool looking actually. So wheelbase, pretty crazy. It's a lot smaller. So 83 inch, a Can-Am uh, two seat XRC, I believe is around 130, 133. So it's almost 50 inches. This is almost 50 inches smaller, shorter than a Can-Am X3. So that's pretty crazy. This is like a whole kind of new segment, I, I think in the side-by-sides. 64 wide. So it's not 72, but with the chassis being so narrow and being a one seater, a 64 inch chassis is kind of like a long travel buggy feel, I think. So that's pretty cool too. The Walker Evan shocks have always been good, uh, been comfortable. So I bet the suspension's pretty decent. It's, you know, it's not the same uh, crazy suspension on X3, but it's a different machine. It's smaller, it probably works pretty well. 
So they say they've got a high performance drivetrain. I don't know what they mean by that. I think they've, it looks pretty efficient. So it's got a, not a lot of angle um, from front to back. So hopefully they're losing less power um, and getting more power to the ground. 110 horse, honestly, in this machine, so I was looking up some of the specs. This machine weighs 1340, so 1340 pounds with 110 horse. You know, I remember when 110 horse was the top. I bought a Jagged X a RZR, uh, I had 107 horse, and I it was like the coolest thing on the planet. So 110 horsepower with 1340 as your weight, it's gonna be fast. It's pretty decent, actually. You know, we all love our turbos, but Honestly, it's gonna be pretty good. And that's been a good, and it'll be a good solid motor, I think. The intake system's cool. I like how they bring it up top, so it's got kind of like a natural uh, ram air, and it's cool that, you know, you can hit, you can kind of get this thing wet, you're not worrying about sucking water through your motor. Um, that's pretty awesome. Dual radiator fan. So I think it's pretty sick that everything is kind of compact in the back there. Um, <laughs> um, so it should be good. Hopefully uh, no, more, uh, no more fire problems or recalls on this thing. I like Tanner, he's a good driver. It's cool that they got him to promote it. Well, let's go back to that. Um, the new gauge cluster looks pretty good. I'm happy to see that they, they basically, it looks like a Can-Am gauge cluster, uh, pretty much. <laughs> but it looks good though. Um, I like how we have, it was cool how it did the sweep when it came on, but it's nice that they have it right in front of you now. It's not this little teeny thing over here. So definitely a big improvement on the gauge cluster too. I like, I like their new setup. Again, I think, it I think it looks pretty cool. It's growing on me. It's definitely growing on me. They definitely want you to know that it's good at everything still. It's fast, you can go through the woods, you can hit some rocks. Like, they want you to know that it's, it'll do everything. That rear light is pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That's, that's some cool design. Again, I like how compact it is. I like that it's an all new machine. It's an all new chassis. It's not like they just took some old thing and added a couple parts. It is all new. So they, they put some time and thought into this machine. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. Oh yeah, we gotta talk about that. The left foot brake. Where is she? So, they put this cool brake pedal on it. I think that's interesting. So you got your left foot brake. So you have the two pedals. Kind of a cool idea. Again, you know, innovative. People are thinking about stuff. I, I like it. I think it's cool. You know, at first I thought it looked kind of unstable, but with your center mass just like right in the center of the machine, your center front to back, your center side to side, and pretty low, it's probably pretty stable. So it's kind of a cool design, definitely pretty innovative. Sounds good. All right. So this is what we got. So first of all, I'm a little disappointed they didn't come out with a good X3 competitor. But with that being said, this machine is not an X3 competitor. This machine is kind of, they're trying to get a whole different market. I'm not exactly sure who. Um, you know, I'm not gonna sell my X3 for an RS1. I think this machine is for somebody, uh, it's for two people. It's for a guy that has an X3 or a RZR four seater for his family and would like something else too. It's the second machine. Um, 
I think they did that the Ace or whatever two years ago, that little the little 900, 800 Ace, and it, they tried to make this cheap. They're trying to get more of the market to buy a side-by-side. -side. So they're trying to make a cheaper side-by-side -side that more people can afford. So I think they bring that out, and I think people were a little excited, but then they realized that it just kind of isn't the same sport fun as a side-by-side. -side. So I think this is their answer. I think they had a lot of people that said, hey, what about a one-seater that is a lot more aggressive? And so they came up with this, and I do think it's cool. I do think it's cool. I definitely, like I said, I can't compare it to the other stuff on the market. It's its own thing. I think it's closest comparable to me would be the Yamaha. Because uh, the Yamaha is like this engaging kind of fun. It's not the fastest, but it is a good price and it is a fun little side-by-side. -side. So I think if I'm gonna compare it to something, that's what I compare it to. I compare it to a YXZ. I think that's the closest comparable for me. Um, yeah, so I think, I think it's, I'm bummed they didn't do a competitor, but I do think it's cool. I like it. So yeah, this is either for like the dude that always rides by himself um, and, he, and he just wants to go ride with his buddies and he gets a one-seater. And, and something to be said too um, with it is $13.99. So I mean an X3 is 28 grand. So it only has one person, but it's half the price. So again, I think they're they're trying to broaden, broaden their, their range of uh, side-by-sides, and they're trying to get that guy that still wants the sport side-by-side, -side, um, but he can't afford 28 grand. So I do think it's cool. Um, I like it. I like it. As much as I am a little disappointed they didn't come out with something um, to compete with X3, I do think it's a cool machine, and a part of me kind of, want, <laughs> kind of wants one. Um, it is a little harder to justify because it's one person and I'm not selling my X3, there's no way. Like I love my X3, it's not on, you know, this is not on caliber with the X3. But I do go riding by myself a lot. And well, I mean with friends, but I'm in my machine by myself. And uh, I don't know, man, it does look fun. So I guess I need to get in one and drive it and see how it does, but 14,000, oh, the Polaris is definitely trying to make this like an accessory monster. They want you to buy, they already got their accessory videos out. They want you to buy all these little things. The aftermarket will have fun with this. You guys will be able to make a ton of parts for it. But yeah, they're definitely trying to give you this cheap side-by-side -side that then you go and spend five grand worth of crap on, which is typical. But that's their marketing strategy. They definitely want you to buy this for cheaper and then just start adding all these little parts. That's where they're gonna make their money. Um, but I think it's cool. I'm excited about it. Uh, I need to get out and drive one and kind of see how it is. I am kind of, I'm, I'm excited, but then I have a feeling that there's gonna be like a 72 inch Dynamics turbo one seater and I'm like gonna buy this one and then six months later I'm gonna be like freak and that thing is gonna be crazy. If you get 168 horsepower in this thing with dynamic shocks and it's full long travel, that, dude, you got me. Polaris, if you make that machine, if you make a turbo, one-seater, dynamics, um, long travel, one-seater, I'm in. Like, I'm 100% in. I'm, I'm excited about this machine. You make that machine, you got me. Like, you got me, dude. That'll be freaking cool. Um, yeah, so I think it's awesome. Bottom line, I think it's a cool machine. I'm excited. I'm excited to see him on the trail and on in, in the dunes and kind of everywhere. Um, it's going to perform well, I think. It's got a good power to weight ratio. It's an all new redesign. It's got some pretty trick stuff. And I think they did a good job and I think it's a decent price point, you know, for this machine. And if they do make the turbo one, dude, that's going to be cool. That is going to be cool. So I guess, you know, it's a one seat, but you could buy two. You could buy two for the price. So if you, if you want to drive your own machine and, and have your, your wife next to you or, or have one for your buddy, I mean, you could buy two for the price of the other, of the other RZRs or, or Canon X3. So, I don't know. It's interesting. I want to hear what you guys think. What do you guys think about the new, the new RS1? Would you buy one uh, for yourself? You know, could it be your only machine? I don't think so. Could it be a second machine? 
Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think it kind of takes the place of like a motorcycle or my, my snowmobile. We got no snow this year. I mean, I'd probably have this over a snowmobile that's 14 grand. So I think it's cool. I think it's cool. Um, I wish they'd come out with a competitor for the X3, but I do like this and I think they're going to do well with it. All right, guys, please like and subscribe. Comment. Tell me what you think uh, about the players. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya.